Hello everyone, in this video we want to introduce you a very nice book, a great book called Applied Soil Mechanics with Abacus Application. It is very nice uh, book actually for those who are interested in uh, solving the uh, geotechnical uh, problem. Uh, and in this book you can find a lot of examples and also you can find the you know theoretical uh, background and uh, also you can test, it, uh, test out your Abacus skill. Okay, so for example, here I can show you some of the, uh, let's say, uh, theoretical background. So you can read this uh, information, very useful information. And uh, also you will get uh, some examples as well as the, uh, uh, let's say, uh, some hand calculation, you know, to compare the result of the finite element with the uh, theoretical equations. Uh, in this example, so I want to go to uh, here, page, here I have the example 8.4, and uh, so I want to focus on this. So here we have the uh, a problem uh, given. Using the finite element method, calculate the long-term load capacity of a pile with diameter of uh, 0.6 meter and embedded length of the uh, pile, which is equals to 16 meter in a thick homogeneous clay layer as shown in figure 11. Uh, as you can see here in the figure 811, so you have the condition of the pile, okay, and here also you have the diameter of the, of the pile, and here also you have the information of the uh, soil profile uh, but uh, in this book uh, the good thing is that uh, you know the problem are related to a previous pro uh, problem and also to the next problem or examples even are related to previous examples and uh, uh, let's say next examples so here since I have the example 8.4 also if you uh, read the book so you can get you know uh, all the information just if you go back you know a few pages uh, to uh, page, for example, 294. So here you will get all the information about the, uh, let's say, the uh, soil young modulus. You have the uh, uh, other information, okay, the friction angle, uh, the, let's say, you know, cap hardening, uh, cap eccentricity. So all the information that you uh, need, so you can find from the book. And uh, the only thing that you need to do, just go to, uh, let's say, your uh, Abacus software or your uh, uh, in, in open your uh, your finite element uh, solution. It can be Abacus, it can be ANSYS, but here particularly as we said that so the problem or that this book is uh, customized for Abacus. Okay, but at the same time uh, those who are familiar with ANSYS or Diana also you can uh, they can go for uh, uh, you know this book to uh, let's say uh, use the examples uh, given in this uh, nice book. Okay, so let me just uh, go to this example. Okay, so here I have all the information. And uh, here it is the, the overall view of the uh, problem. So I have the pile, which is here, and the overall length of the pile is uh, 16 meter. And here I have the, uh, let's say, the continuous of the soil profile. And here the soil profile, or let's say the extension is 15 meter. And here I have the uh, support condition, I have the ruler, I have the hinge or pin support, and here it is the axis of symmetry. And from here also you can consider the, uh, you know, a proper type of boundary condition. As you can see here in the uh, general view or general scheme of the problem, here you have the pile, okay, and then so you need to, uh, let's say, um, uh, display, displace the pile or move the pile by uh, 10 centimeter, and then so after that you need to uh, figure out uh, how much is the pile capacity in the finite element solution so uh, already you have the position of the pile here and then you can apply the uh, displacement uh, to the pile and uh, also it uh, has been given that the displacement that we need to apply is uh, 10 centimeter if you come to this uh, graph which is the final graph and this graph actually uh, gives us the 
uh, the capacity of the pile and here we have the displacement axis and here I have the maximum displacement of 10 centimeter so I want to uh, analyze the pile under this 10 centimeter uh, displacement to find out the pile capacity uh, under drain condition and also if you go back to uh, example 84 as we said that so here you have the uh, drained uh, condition so you can read this uh, uh, let's say example and you will see uh, the condition that uh, you need to consider in your finite element analysis let's go to abacus so here uh, we created this okay and here i have the pile in the part so here i have the two part i have the pile and also i have the soil uh, profile as you can see here i have the soil profile and then uh, so uh, the soil profile just be created like this okay and if you go back to to the book so here you can see that the profile is like this so here the diameter is 0 0.6 meter that's why in the uh, finite element uh, solution so we create this one or let's say consider half of this which means you know in this direction so we remove this and we consider this one as 0 0.3 meter okay the radius of the pile so uh, because here we can uh, go for uh, uh, let's say uh, unsymmetric or anti-symmetric uh, condition in abacus and then so you don't need to create this uh, half of the radius in abacus that's why here you have something like this so we went for same condition here as shown in the picture that's why here i have the soil profile like this and if I go to the assembly, for example, here you can see the assembly. And if I want to show it uh, in this manner, so here the green part is the pile. Okay, and here I have the uh, soil profile. And if you go to, um, let's say, query, so from here I can go to measure the distance. From here, as you can see, I have the 15 meter. Okay, so here is 15 meter. And uh, so from here also I have from here to here is 6.7 okay so here I have 6.7 and if you go to the book so here you have 6.7 meter and uh, also the length of the pile is 16 meter so if you click here and here okay so here we have the 16 16 meter and also the radius of the pile so we consider as 0 0.3 so here you can see the 300 e minus 3 which is uh, 0 0.3 meter so we uh, model this so uh, in the part and then so you can go to the properties again as we said that in the book you have all the information so you can go to the properties for the concrete we create the density and also elastic uh, uh, parameters including the uh, uh, position, uh, position ratio and uh, also for the soil here we have the information for example cap elasticity cap hardening elastic and also uh, permeability okay if you go to the book again so here you have all this information for example for cap eccentricity cap hardening okay and so on so forth okay and also for example the void ratio initial void ratio of the soil so you have all this information okay so uh, we uh, define the material and then you can go to the uh, we talked about the assembly so then you can go to the step so in a step actually we created uh, three steps the first step uh, it is actually a type of uh, geostatic and also the second step type of geostatic but in the first step you are going to apply the weight to the pile and uh, soil profile so it is the purpose of creating the first step in the second step which is again it is geostatic type so we want to consider the interaction between pile and soil so that's why we uh, uh, actually created you know two type of interaction frictionless and with friction uh, for uh, frictionless so we can go for uh, let's say interaction okay or let me uh, explain it in the ex uh, interaction so it is uh, better uh, for understanding and the second step so is the loading step so after defining or let's say after applying the weight uh, of the uh, soil profile and uh, pile so then we went to uh, specify the 
for defining the interaction between pile and soil and after having the interaction so we can go to uh, final step which is loading and then we can apply the load at the top of the uh, or let's say on the top of the uh, uh, file okay so if I go to the uh, interaction so here I have the interaction first I, I created two interactions so here we have the friction and frictionless interaction so if you go here so here we have the uh, let's say uh, tangential behavior and normal behavior and also here again we have the tangential behavior and normal normal behavior okay but for friction so here we create the uh, friction as a penalty uh, penalty and here I have the 0 0.385 even for the penalty you have the information in the book okay so if you go to here you have the penalty type interface between the pile and the soil with a prediction factor of 0 0.385 so you have all this information no need uh, to worry about it and then uh, if I go to interaction manager which is here so as we said that in uh, a step we had three steps so the first step uh, you know with the geostatic type uh, we created or let's say uh, we defined the weight of the uh, soil profile and pile so that's why here so in the initial condition so we have the weight of the soil and weight of the pile okay and then here just you know apply and it is the frictionless type of interaction and the second one okay so which is here it is the uh, friction interaction and this uh, friction uh, interaction so as you can see here uh, I, I just defined it under a step interaction but under a step geostatic so just I want to have the weight of the pile and also weight of the soil in the step interaction so I created the interaction to define the interaction between pile under two conditions friction and with friction and without friction okay so uh, if I uh, just a little bit zoom out as you can see here so I have the interaction for both condition with friction and without friction between pile and soil and uh, here you can see also I created another two interaction uh, but this one is uh, nothing uh, uh, unless you know the interaction you know at the bottom of the pile with the soil so you can combine this uh, two interaction I mean simultaneously you can select uh, you know this surface and this surface let's say here in the initial step and then you can create it you can uh, combine this interaction to get, uh, together I mean the frictionless uh, interaction and also uh, friction uh, with friction interaction so to, together but here in this example we decided actually you know to go uh, under this uh, well, let's say in this manner okay so after creating the interaction so you can go to the uh, load so under load first of all we need to apply the uh, uh, let's say uh, the, the uh, uh, body force or let's say uh, the uh, effective uh, density of the concrete and uh, a pile so that's why here I have the effective uh, density of the soil okay and also I have the effective dense density of the uh, pile okay and it is propagated up to uh, step loading so it is from the first step or initial step so after creating the uh, body force and the type uh, as you can see here it is the uh, body force okay the type of apply uh, load is body force and then uh, I can go to the uh, boundary condition so under boundary condition I have uh, five boundary conditions so here uh, we will talk about it and uh, as you can see here the first one is the in, uh, let's say the boundary condition at the axis of symmetry so we uh, create just like this here I have the this option and if you go to boundary condition 2 so here I have the boundary condition which is the ruler at this uh, side of the soil profile so here you can see we have the ruler okay and at the bottom we have the hinge or pin uh, condition so that's why here we have the pinned condition so here you have it and uh, the next one is applying the load as a displacement which is 10 centimeters so already we talked about it so here you can apply at the top of the pile and once again if you want to remember this so here we have the 10 centimeter of the displacement 
Okay, and the uh, last interaction is the uh, applying the pressure at the top of the soil as a wet soil, but uh, in the uh, example 8.4, so if you read the example, uh, it is uh, mentioning that uh, we have actually uh, this problem under drained condition. So that's why definitely uh, no uh, poor water pressure will be generated, and uh, for this reason, uh, we are actually uh, defining the uh, poor pressure, uh, which is equals to zero at the top of the soil profile. Okay, and also uh, you need to uh, go for applying the pressure, you know, uh, here at the top of the soil and also at the bottom uh, side of the profile. So that's why you need to go to the uh, predefined field manager. And from here, first of all, I have, uh, let's say, this condition which means you need to go for apply the uh, void ratio. So here you have the void ratio. And again, if you go to, to the book, so you have this information, so you don't need to worry about it. Here you have the void ratio, okay, as 1.5. So that's why here we applied as 1.5. And also another one is to create the uh, pressure. Okay, so here uh, at the, uh, let's say, a level, 22.7 so the pressure is zero which means here okay so we said that the overall depth of this uh, problem or soil it is 22.7 so we have 6.7 from here to here which means from here to here is 6.7 okay and from here to here is 16 so the overall is 22.7 okay and here it is the location so we apply the zero pressure okay to here and also here i have the another pressure so which is simply is uh, rho g okay and uh, the rho is the effective weight of the concrete which was uh, uh let's uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, effective uh, density of the soil so which was uh, let's say 7000 Okay, and then here you have the time G, which is simply is 9.81 uh, meter per uh, square, uh, second square. Okay, so then you will get actually this uh, value, and it is actually at the level zero, which is here. Okay, and also you have the lateral coefficient. So what is the lateral coefficient? So you can go back to here, and uh, you can find this here. In this analysis, the initial horizontal effective stress is assumed to be 50% of the vertical effective stress. So that's why here you can go for a predefined field manager and apply the lateral coefficient as 0.5 or 50%. So assigning this, and then you can go to, uh, let's say, mesh. So we mesh this uh, uh, profiles in this manner that at the right hand side we have the bigger size of the meshes and uh, you know uh, by reaching to the pile so we have the uh, smaller uh, mesh size uh, to actually concentrate on this uh, region which is the interaction between pile and uh, soil and to get the more accurate result and also if you look at the book so here you have something like this Okay, so here, but uh, here in the book, you can see uh, we have actually, you know, the uniform uh, mesh size up to a certain, certain uh, location. But from here, you have also another, uh, let's say, uh, uh, mesh size. And for pile also, you have another mesh, uh, mesh uh, size, which means in the book, so the meshing divided to three region, which is from here to here. So it is the first region. Okay, and then from here to here, it is another region, and for the pile, so also you have another region. As you can see here, maybe I can say that region 1, region 2, and also region 3. So in the region 1, so all these meshes are similar. Okay, and in uh, region 2, again, all the meshes are similar. Okay, and in region 3, which is for pile, so uh, I can see that uh, it divided actually, you know, to 1, 2, three uh, region okay so it is uh, the suggestion by the book but also you can go for another type of meshing so just to reduce the analysis time so we decided to have something like this okay so here we have 
uh, let's say uh, two meter so here is two meter okay the size here is two meter and we come to here and the font for the pile so here we have 0 0.1 meter okay so it is in this way so simply you can let's say reduce the mesh size by uh, you know uh, a specific technique that we have in abacus so you can decrease the uh, two meter from the right hand side to the left hand side from two meter to 0 0.1 meter <clears throat> okay and uh, also for the uh, soil type so you need to go to let's say part for example here and also you need to go to the uh, sorry you need to go to element type and make sure that for the soil type which is you know the entire soil type make sure that you have the element type as pore fluid uh, slash stress okay so it is another point that you need to consider in your analysis and after that you can go to the job so as you can see here so already job is completed and then you can go to visualization or from here after running the job okay so you can click on the result and then you will come to here so once uh, you are here if i go back to let's say on the form uh, condition so again here i have the pile and as you can see here i have three uh, mesh sizes for the pile which is include uh, four nodes so i have one node here another node here here and here Okay, so I will say that node number one, node number two, three, and four. Okay, so please remember this. And uh, if I go back to the book, here I have the final graph. And from here, so uh, I need to uh, create the uh, displacement axis and also I need to create the uh, load axis. So in this way, so first we can go for creating the load axis. Okay, so for creating the load axis, you can select uh, these four nodes, node number one, two, three, and four. Okay, so you can go to uh, this operation, which is uh, create X, Y data. And I can go to ODB field output. From here, I can go to uh, here, continue. And uh, you can select the RF2. If you remember we apply the load in this direction okay to the pile the top of the pile okay and it is actually in the y direction as you can see here and that's why we are going to extract the reaction forces in this uh, second direction or y direction okay so you need to select this and make sure that here you select the uh, unique nodal Otherwise, you cannot uh, see the, uh, let's say, RF2 or even later we want to create the uh, U2. Okay, so uh, separately, first you can go to uh, creating the RF2 and then go to the element. And from here, so you can add the selection. For example, you can select this, okay, by pressing shift. You can add this and also add this three point and then you can plot it. So already I plot this, uh, um, let's say, forces for this uh, nodes. So here, if I go to here, I have this, 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 and this. Okay, it is for force. After having the force, so you can go to, again, uh, create XY data option, and then you can go to operation. Okay, continue. And from here, since I have this uh, four graphs, so before that, I can just go to here. I have the summation. So you can click on the summation, and then you can select, you know, all this, uh, let's say uh, uh, loads and from here simply you can uh, let's say add it to expression okay using this option so you can add to expression so by doing this actually what the software is uh, it does so the software just you know uh, go for uh, let's say uh, mm, for for uh, let's say uh, uh, adding uh, this uh, force node, for example, uh, the force node from node 1 plus node 2 plus node 3 and also plus node uh, 4. Okay, so simply instead of this, so you can go for summation or you can, if I go to clear expression, so you can select this option, which is the graph that you take from node 1 
plus so here you can double click on this plus double click on this plus double click on this plus double click on this okay and then you can uh, plot the expression so once you plot the expression so here i already plotted so i have something like this okay and uh, so after that i can go to displacement so again for the displacement if i go back to here so i can select all these four nodes and then i can go to for selecting the nodes again you can go to odb field output continue and this time so you need to change this one to u okay and then here you can select the u2 and then go to element and again from here you can add so you can select this four nodes after selecting the nodes so you can again go to uh, here and go to operation xy data okay and then here you can go for average you can take the average displacement of this four nodes okay but uh, also you can since here actually you know the pile uh, dimension is uh, really small compared to overall system that we have the geometry of overall system that you have also you can go for selecting you know one of this node instead of uh, selecting four nodes and then go to uh, extract the average displacement of this four nodes so you can go for only select one node for just for uh, let's say uh, simplicity okay so here i can select this node and then so you can plot it and then you can save it okay so already i create this and here i have the displacement and here i have a displacement as minus 0.10 uh, meter or 10 centimeter okay so after having the uh, the summation of the uh, force and also the displacement so which means we have this uh, two we have these two uh, figures i have the axis of displacement and also i have axis of the load so then i need to combine them together so how i can combine them so you can go to again this option create xy data and then go to operation on xy data and then continue from here so the uh, let's say uh, extracted data for force and displacement already listed here so I need to go to combine them. Okay, so you can go to combine. Here you have the combine. Just click on this. And uh, since in the book I have the horizontal axis as a load, so first I need to uh, uh, call the uh, R2 or force. Okay, in the first uh, allocation. So that's why here I will double click on this. And then I have it. And then go to displacement and double click on the displacement. Okay, and then if I create the plot, so I have something like this, but here I have the negative value for the force. So I need to correct this. And also, if you look at this uh, graph, it is uh, almost, uh, you know, opposite compared to this graph that I have. Okay, so it is the graph in the book. So it is the graph. Okay, so I'm just like this. It is the graph. And if I go back to here, so just I need to put one negative before uh, R2 sum or before the uh, extracted loads okay and then if I again go to uh, plot expression so then I have the same thing as you can see here you have this and here also as we mentioned you have similar things so you have this okay so in this way we can create and combine the data so after having the uh, data so here I have this new uh, data xy data okay however previously since i created so here i created uh, a force displacement curve if i double click on this uh, sorry if i go to let's say edit okay so here i have let's say this is actually no zero value okay so later you can uh, mm, just uh, uh, give this value or export this value to excel or from here you can create the uh, let's say the line which is these two lines okay which means the dot lines which is this one and this one and then you need to from the intersection of this uh, two lines so you need to create one vertical line and then here it is the answer of this uh, problem okay so let me go back to abacus 
So we said that if you want to uh, export this uh, XY data to Excel, so already I already exported to Excel, and I make the you know the first two value as zero because uh, the amount is uh, very less. As you can see here, it is uh, minus two power of uh, let's say e minus six. So simply you can consider it as zero. Okay, that's why here I put zero, and uh, uh, whatever actually. Uh, uh, we obtained from Abacus is based on the Newton and millimeter. That's why from here I change the Newton to kilonewton just by uh, let's say dividing the uh, value by thousand. Okay, and here also uh, I convert the uh, millimeter to centimeter as you can see here. So if you go to the final one, so here I have the meter, and if I convert it to centimeter, so here just uh, multiply this value by hundred. Okay, and then here I have minus 10 here. Okay, so I have minus 10 here, which is this. And also from here, the last value that I have, which is somewhere here, it is 746 uh, kN. Okay, here it is 746 kN. Okay, so after uh, getting this value, so then you need to create uh, this line exactly, uh, let's say, in tangential with the uh, line, the graph, and from here, so you need to go to the intersection of this one and create a vertical line, and as you can see here, if I uh, zoom in, okay, so here, and uh, just assume that here it is uh, 500 kN, here is 600 kN, maybe here it is uh, 550 kN okay and then here so it's maybe around I don't know uh, the book later I will show you it uh, just uh, calculated as 530 kN but here for us maybe if it is uh, 550 so here I can say that 540 530 520 it is something like, let's say, you know, 520, um, I don't know, 25, or approximately actually is uh, 530. Okay, so approximately is 530 kN. Okay, so this location. Okay, so then uh, if I go back to, to the book, so here, exactly you have the same thing. Okay, so and then... If you go back to here, the book, here it is the result, and the load capacity of the pile is 530 kN. So it is the final result, and it is the pile capacity in the long term under drain condition. So anyway, guys, uh, hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, uh, presentation and tutorial. But the main thing is that you know you can. Uh, have this uh, uh, great book applied soil mechanics with abacus application if you need this book please uh, leave the comment uh, below of this video i will share the book with you as well and if you have any question any concern so please also let me know and uh, in future uh, we will come back to you uh, and to address your concern thank you so much for uh, being with us and stay tuned with us to get the most updated uh, tutorial and uh, information and have a great day stay safe bye bye